We've had about 20 companies in the S&P 500 cut their dividends uh, in the last several weeks. So the, it's not a, a huge amount, but uh, it's almost 5% of the S&P 500. I'm talking about eliminate their div dividends at this point. I've noticed something, um, Mike and Brian, and I, either one of you can weigh in here, that the dividend ETFs have significantly underperformed the market for the most part. So the S&P 500 is down about 12%, but the big ETFs in the dividend space, Vanguard, high dividend yield, um, down 17%. The aristocrats, NOBL, uh, that ProShares has down 17%. High dividend from iShares, the Spider dividend is down 20%. That's a significant underperformance, almost 50% weaker than the S&P 500. I'm wondering why that is. Uh, it, it's curious to me because most of these, like Noble, th they are specifically designed to have companies in there that are increasing their dividend on a regular basis or maintaining a, a comparatively high dividend. Seems to me if Suddenly, some companies were cutting their dividend. They would be dropped from these if they were in the indexes. But investors don't seem to be looking at it that way. Brian, do you have any thoughts on, on dividend ETFs at, 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 in this juncture? Yeah. So, Bob, I think, I think we're seeing a couple of things play out. First of all, uh, the leadership in this market has been primarily driven by mega, mega uh, tech, um, which don't typically pay dividends. And so some of the dividend paying companies have uh, lagged uh, because of that. Um, we're actually seeing investors looking to rotate more towards quality. Um, they're very interested in companies that have a strong balance sheet uh, to, to, to manage their ongoing business expenses, pay down debt, uh, that they don't have leverage, um, and, and that will help them navigate some of these markets. Some of those companies do pay dividends, uh, but not all of them. And so I do think there will be some differentiation, and, and it's mostly down to the leadership in this market right now. And uh, Mike, you feel the same way? That's, that makes a lot of sense to me. If you want you, quality, is a strong balance sheet. That's certainly what you want in this kind of environment. It, I guess a dividend is, as Brian said, may be an aspect of it, but doesn't necessarily have to be. Would that account for why we're seeing an underperformance? A, a dividend isn't as important at this point as strong balance sheet. Absolutely. I think the biggest thing to remember with dividend ETFs is dividend is in a lot of names in ETFs. There's 177 ETFs and just listed in the US that have dividend in their name with over $200 billion following those products. At the end of the day, um, dividends can be used a number of different ways to create much, very different portfolios. So as Brian said, you know, he's seeing a rotation to quality. Well, those um, dividend ETFs that have quality characteristics such as a DGRO, or a VIG have performed much better and in fact are outperforming the market year to date. So it's important to keep the context of dividend and the methodology around how the dividend is being used, whether it's yield, which if you're just using yield, tends to lead to value. And from that perspective, you know we know what's going on in the market from a perspective of value versus growth. And you're seeing the very similar thing with dividends. The other thing I always tell people with respect to any sort of screening methodology and any sort of ETF is to understand your sector exposures. And depending on how you're screening using dividends, it can lead to massive overweights. For example, HDV has nearly 25% of its portfolio in energy because it's focused in on those higher yielders and it uses a moat, um, a Morningstar's moat characteristics, which is not the same as a balance sheet item um, as far as looking for um, that quality balance sheet. So the dividend ETF, it's just important to note that the word dividend doesn't necessarily have anything to do with yield. Um, it's the way they're using that dividend to get to the end portfolio.